If you want to download this map, it's so easy. Just go to the Steam Workshop page and click subscribe. It will download the mod. You need to own Halo 3 ODST on Steam. If you want the music to work properly, go to the Nexus page, download the file, drag and drop that file into your Halo 3 ODST Steam FMOD folder. Yeah, it's a pain to do it like this, but hopefully 343 gets a solution to this up and running. Hope you enjoy the map. And let me know through Twitter, the comments, Discord, etc. If you find the Easter egg, there's a cool little surprise waiting for you. And also, if I see some real good support in this mod, I'll consider making more maps. Maybe if I get like 2,000 likes. I might even follow up with more Doom maps if this gets, I don't know, 5,000 likes? So, how did I make this map? Well, let's go through it. We don't need another AI battle map. When I went through the process of making a map, I just wanted to learn how to make a level. And that's what I think most people should do, just learn how to make a level. Don't rebalance it, you're not a better designer than Bungie. But making a map is easy. Install the Halo mod tools off Steam, run this batch file, it'll extract all the data from this archive. This is all the data for the game, it'll create two folders most importantly, the data and the tags folder. Data is the stuff that you interact with, tags is the stuff that the engine interacts with. Tool is a command line utility that lets you convert data into tags and vice versa. Gorilla lets you edit tags, Sapien lets you place stuff in a map. Tags just hold data for something. For example, a weapon has a weapon tag, a vehicle has a vehicle tag. Now one may wonder why one would even bother learning the Halo tools. I wonder that myself. Considering even Halo is going to be abandoning these tools, if rumours are to be trusted. At the very least, you do get some kind of transferable experience in 3D, as all the levels are built completely within 3D modelling software, which is unusual. Bungie back in the day would have used 3DS Max, but you'll probably want to use Blender. You also get to play around with Halo's AI and Sandbox, already made and built for you. Plus, it's free. That helps. It's also possible to make cool things like Cursed Halo. You'll probably want to use Blender. Install that. Download the Community Halo Blender tools. Simply drag and drop them into your add-ons folder. Open Blender. And then there's of course a mandatory step where you have to select everything and then delete it. And then go to Preferences. Search for the Halo tools. Tick them to enable them. Boom. You can now create a Master Chief to celebrate. Shift A, create an object, any, just a sphere or something. Rename it here to B underscore level root. Everything in your level will be a child of this. Anything that isn't a child of this won't be in your level. Shift A, get a cube. This will be your actual level geometry. Click on it, then control click on the level root. Whatever is orange rather than dark red becomes the parent. Control P, object, keep transform. This sets the level root as the parent of the object. You can see it's a child now. Click the cube and just the cube. S to scale it up. Control A to apply scale. Don't forget that. It's important and will fuck you up if you forget to do it. Press N, go to view, add a couple extra zeros here and one here. Click this little arrow to enable backface culling. These are basic quality of life things that'll help you a lot. Backface culling will make the backside of objects invisible. Press tab to go into edit mode. A to select everything. Alt N to flip normals. Click down on this material icon here. Click new to make a new material. Go to the top left, file, export, ass. Change the game version to Halo 3 MCC. This Halo 3 map style applies for both Halo 3 and ODST. Now you're gonna have to choose somewhere in the data folder to place your ass. Typically within Levels Atlas, which is the ODST campaign, or Levels Solo, the Halo 3 campaign. Realistically, it could be anywhere in the data folder, just within a structure folder. Now export that ass. Go back to your base mod folder, type cmd into the directory bar to open the command prompt at this location. Type tool structure and the location of your file within the data folder. Also include the name of the ass file in the command. Press enter. Now open up Sapien. Find the equivalent location of the ass folder within the tags folder. Open up the scenario file. Congrats! You've made your first Halo map. By the way, all that tool stuff you do with CMD can also be done with Usoyos, which is a community tool. Go to Scenario, Game Data, then click on Player Starting Points. Then left click anywhere on the map to create one. Press Tab to spawn in. You can now move around and admire the beauty of your map. It's all just Da Vinci texture. So let's make like Rose at the end of Titanic and leave this Da Vinci behind. 
Go back into Blender, change the material name to plus sky. This means the material shows the sky box. Create a new material. Let's make this one the metal from the mission, the Ark. Did you know you can easily export maps out of Halo? Just use extract import info. Use the entire directory of a scenario structure BSP file in the quotes. In this case, 070 waste, which is the name for the arc in the game files. Oh yeah, and we're using all of the Halo 3 game files from ODST. You can do this by just copying over all the map files and object files. Just make sure not to replace anything that exists when you're copying them over. We'll take the BSP for the first area. Go to Blender, Import Arse. It's good to do this in a new Blender file. Boom. We can now see the map in Blender. This is really useful for seeing how Bungie made their maps. Let's take the texture of one of the metal objects. Waste Panel Catwalk. All you need to do to apply the material correctly is name it correctly. And what that's doing is that on import it'll apply the data of this shader tag. Any materials you have in Blender must have the same name as a shader tag. Using the prefix waste in front of it here means you're referring to a shader that is within the waste folder. This allows Tool to find the shader on import. You can see all of the prefixes available within the shader collections file. Click on the panel catwalk, make sure you're in face mode, and assign it to the bottom surface. Export the arse, build it again, now, you have a textured level, and a skybox. You can easily add in a skybox from any of the games right here. Just open it up here and select it in any of the other levels. You have some tools to build geometry. Click the ground, I to inset, E to extrude, inset, extrude, Control R to create loop cuts. Scroll to determine how many. Alt click on an edge to select the whole loop. S to scale, G to move, R to rotate. Double tap G to slide the loop along the edge. Click on some faces. X to delete, just delete the faces. Select two edges at the top. Press F to fill in. Select these edges, fill in. Export the arse again, build it again. You'll notice these open edge warnings. What this means is that the whole BSP must act like a bubble, and it can't be leaking anything. It can't have geometry outside the map, no open edges, degenerate triangles. Halo is kinda cool in that it forces good modeling practice. Now to fix these open edges, make sure that no vertices are floating off by themselves, that the map is sealed and all the vertices connect. In this case, just select these edges, extrude, you can select snap to vertex right here. Hold control and hover over a vertex to bring it there and then just click to place it. If you press Z, you'll only move on the vertical axis. If you want these vertices to join, you can select everything with A. Press M and choose Merge by Distance. This combines these vertices on the edges here that were separate. You may then Alt click to select the loop. F to make a face. Make sure to assign the sky material to these faces to keep them as sky. Export ass, build. Your open edges should be fixed. And if the changes aren't applied, just try exporting and building again. You can press up on the arrow key in command prompt and it'll just bring back an old command. You may notice this texture is stretched. To fix it, you need to adjust UVs. Go to the UV editing tab at the top here. Also hold Z, move your mouse down to go to material preview and let go of the Z key. If you want to see your textures in Blender, you can make them part of the material. You can extract Halo textures using this Reclaimer tool by Gravemind2401. Open map, 070 waste, find the bitmap folder, extract all, choose where you want them, back to Blender. Under this material, select the yellow next to base color, select image texture, open. Find the image that corresponds to your shader. For help with this, you can open up the shader in Gorilla and seeing the name of the bitmap within the shader. You can also change icon options in the top right here in Blender if that makes it easier. In this case, the shader and bitmap have the exact same name. They do not always, which can be tricky. And remember, when you add this image texture to the material, it's only visible to you in Blender. It's only used to visualize the UVs and how the texture looks on the object. It doesn't actually affect how the texture appears in engine. Only the name and this stuff affect how it looks in game. What are UVs anyway? A UV map is basically just a map that determines how a 2D texture is applied to a 3D object. Think of how you'd unwrap a cube into this thing. To unfuck a face, simply click on it and press U, unwrap. Now you've got a UV map on the left. This has similar rules to objects, select vertices, faces, etc, scale, move, all of that. Go to the left, press N, view, 
repeat image. Now you can move it around and see how the image on the left applies to the face on the right. I can alt click and select this loop at the top here. It'll unwrap the whole thing as one connected island. You can press L to select the island. You can also move individual vertices and faces. How about we select this inner ring? Unwrap it and it looks all ugly and warped like the heart of a Twitter user. How do we fix this? Just select an edge, Control e mark seam, select the loop again, unwrap. Now it unwraps into a strip, and you can see the seam in the texture here. It doesn't line up as smoothly. That's the seam. Export that, build it, and admire your newly unwrapped textures. Now, if you want that in more detail, I'd recommend Blender Guru's Donut series. There is also a page on C20 documenting this, as well as the tool commands if you need. This is also official Microsoft documentation. You may fly around these bungee maps and notice there are all these objects that are separate from the BSP. When you leave the map, the backside of them is still visible, like these rocks for example. This is called instance geometry, separate objects you place within the BSP. To create one is simple. Shift A to add a new object, scale it however you want, apply the scale, place it wherever you want, set its parent to B underscore level root, you can give it a material and all. Now, most important part, go here and add a percent sign to the start of its name. Now export, build it. You may see in tool that it's building these poops. Instance Geo are referred to as poops, because poops are in the arse. That's the way Bungie named it and I wouldn't have it any other way. If you want enemies to be able to pathfind around them, add a plus to the name. You may run into some issues, for example when the object just turns into a flat crumpled piece of paper. To fix that, go to global settings under Halo Scene Properties. Set that to Halo 3, or whatever game you're currently working on. Go back to the Material tab, click on the material applied to the object. Go down to the Halo Material Properties and enable the precise flag on the material. There are a bunch of other material flags here to create any kind of surface you want. One you can only walk over. One you can only see and walk right through. Windows, water, breakable surfaces. Ones that only emit light but are never seen. Play around with these for desired effect. There's also a few other options you have for the prefixes in the name of the instance geo. For example, I applied per pixel light maps to fix a lighting bug I had. You can look at Bungie's maps to get an idea of these things. And that's enough of a basic intro to get started on making things. An important thing to remember is WWBD, Worldwide Beauty Distribution Group. Sorry, what would Bungie do? Just look at examples of how they set things up. You can look at their maps to see how they built them. Look at their scripts to see how they did things. Look at their weapon and AI placements and objectives. And keep the sandbox how it is. You're probably not a better designer than Bungie. Everything in Bungie's sandbox is the way it is for a reason. The weapons, the enemies, the health and damage tables. When you start changing things, you pull on a thread which begins to unravel other parts of the game in unexpected ways. Bungie's design is thoroughly tested through thousands of hours and millions of dollars. It is the way it is for a reason. Now, I think it's alright to make minor changes, I did that myself. In fact, I made some more changes previously to things such as movement and health and I scaled those changes back to be more like they are in the release products. It's also better to be additive, bringing new things to the sandbox rather than changing existing things. If you really insist on changing something, at least accompany it with a visual change. Change the color or something. If you can't even change the color of a weapon, you have no business redesigning the game. Hell, if you ask nicely and give credit, your fellow modders might let you use some of their weapon mods in your own mod. Don't bother with rebalance mod number 5 bajillion where every weapon is a laser beam accurate. Don't do Halo X in Halo Y because literally every Halo game is already being ported to every other Halo game. Don't do AI battles. Don't do your tactical Halo game where you fight human enemies because human enemies suck to fight in Halo. Don't do your flood horror game. You'd literally be better off just building that in Unity. You'll realize that making good atmosphere requires a lot of effort and skill, technically, aesthetically, and musically. Also, design the level first. Do art last. This space needs to be fun before it's pretty. Just make a level. 
Start by making a very simple level, like two encounters with some simple art, before going on to larger things. Do not start on your epic huge campaign project straight away. Also, while fun is subjective, and people have preferences, if everybody is telling you that something isn't fun, it isn't fun. No matter how attached you are to a certain idea, when you get 80% of people with some type of problem, well then you know you have more of an issue. You may get some haters who want to shit on you no matter what, but if literally everyone else thinks your map sucks, it sucks. If I sound harsh in saying any of this, remember that it's speaking from experience. I've made basically all of these mistakes, I have a ton of unreleased garbage. For my map, I had to figure out how to adapt Doom to Halo. Aesthetically and in gameplay, the encounters are based off Doom, but I've spun them off, taking them in a direction that works better in Halo's sandbox. For example, classic Halo elements like the sleeping grunts in the hallway. I had to place a lot of crates around. I largely recreated the secrets from the original, mostly accurate except for where it can be changed to work better as a Halo map. I've also added some easter eggs of my own for anyone who dares to find them. One of the biggest challenges in recreating this map is context. In Doom, everything is kind of arbitrary. The enemies are just placed around an area, waiting for you to arrive. In Halo, they need to be doing something, and they kind of need to have a reason for doing it. They may be occupying an area, patrolling it. The world needs to be responsive, like this phantom coming over to drop off this wraith when you hit the button to go outside. The art is also kind of arbitrary in Doom. A lot of the areas in Doom are built to be fun first with little consideration for how they actually work as real areas. A lot of the architecture just doesn't make sense. The Halo areas have slightly more context. This is a hangar. This is a prison. This is a command center. Even the Forerunner areas tend to have a purpose. It's not like Halo areas always make sense, but they tend to think about it. Some spaces require some thought for how I'd turn them into a Halo space. For example, this main indoor area. I thought about what the closest Halo analog to what a toxic pit from Doom would be. Well, it's a bottomless pit. Instead of this bridge, I naturally had a light bridge, the iconic Halo element. For this space, I took artistic inspiration from this room on the Ark. It's also, luckily enough, one of the few places where there is curved, non-angular forerunner geometry, even though I didn't even use it. Speaking of, I had to at least somewhat learn the rules of forerunner geometry. It focuses on greys, but with secondary, tertiary, etc. colours, spanning silvers, whites, blacks, purples, golds, and 45 degree angles. Some other angles too, but mostly 45 degrees. Also, I was thinking about this big open area here, with these kind of ribs that go all the way down. I realized you can actually jump down to the bottom using the ribs. I thought about making that impossible to do or cutting that out somehow, but I just felt like I'd let people do what they want to do. I will say though, there's nothing waiting for you down there. For this map, I started with basically a straight export from Doom. I had to fix it up to import into Halo. Doom levels are built in a 2D editor using sectors and thus don't follow the rules of the more modern Halo BSP. I had to seal a lot of edges. I then exported maps from Halo. For this map, I mostly looked at Waste, which is the Ark. I looked at areas that had these kinds of open spaces and considered how I'd integrate that geo into the area. I looked at these columns in Doom and I felt that they'd be kind of awkward to integrate into Halo. Something like this worked better. I also used some assets from Halo and Citadel, which is the Covenant. I tried to make them cohesive. While I can think of a lot of things I could improve if I went back and did it again, I think the experience works. For this map, I did have to keep going back and redoing light maps. Light maps in Halo 3 and ODST are unfortunately done using the CPU and take forever. For some reason, the gamma in MCC is really dark, so I had to do a few lighting passes for visibility and visuals. There were also some issues with instance geo, like this piece not lighting correctly. I had to set it to per pixel lighting. Anyway, I hope you all enjoy the map. Send me through the Easter egg on Twitter or Discord if you manage to find the true ending. Please subscribe. I'd like to thank everyone who helped me with this mod. AI for the grenade launch support, Alex G Music for the soundtrack, Discord for the lighties, and Circuit Breaker for the F mod help. I want to thank the folks in modding reclaimers for patiently responding to all my stupid questions. Please subscribe. I want to thank you, the viewer, for watching. I would like to thank my patrons, Will Matty, Lazy the Crazy, Glorious Bees, Maritime Steak 85, Delirious Fool, Topkeck Red, and Adam Safranco. Thank you, and goodbye.